So, Explorer Steve, how did you get your shop together? I frequently get questions. People ask me how I got my shop and got it all together. And that kind of reminds me of a movie that I saw once called Gran Torino, starring Clint Eastwood. And he kind of befriends this Asian kid and they're in his garage one day and this kid is just in awe of all his tools. He's looking around and he goes, oh, I just don't know how you got all this stuff. Look at it all. And, you know, Clint Eastwood is like, well, even a simpleton such as yourself can understand that, that a man acquires these things over 50 years. And he went on to give him a can of, I think it was WD-40, some vice grips and duct tape and told him that 50% of everything he needs to accomplish as a man can be done with those three things. But, you know, I got my tools the same way that Clint Eastwood in the movie did. I acquired them over 50 years. And there's uh, some things that I bought new, you know, when I could. But really, my tool collection started out when I was in my early 20s. And I still have those tools today. Let me show them to you. So here's my first tools I ever had. Here is a Makita cordless drill. This doesn't work anymore and I probably should have thrown it away a long time ago and I should probably get to work throwing it away right now. It's underpowered, it doesn't last very long, and it's hard to get batteries for. This circular saw I still use so I'm keeping it. Same with this jigsaw. And you can see I bought this at a pawn shop for less than $19. I think I paid like $10 for it and a corded drill that I only use to mix paint with and things like that. But these were my first four tools and they served me well in the beginning of my tool collecting journey. My latest cordless drill is like three times cheaper than that Makita or the Bosch that replaced it and it's like twice as powerful because it's a brushless. So tools have come up in quality down in price and their availability to the average homeowner, you and I, is, uh, has improved dramatically. You know, it's a rigid, it's uh, not pro-line, but it doesn't have pro-line cost. It's not a $200 drill. It does the job better than any drill that I've had up to this point. Now, each tool that I have has kind of a story to it, whether I found it on a classified ad back when they didn't have Craigslist. They used to have classified in the papers you had to scour those and every once in a while a tool would show up and I would go and see if I could compete with everybody else trying to get to the classified and get myself a tool and a lot of the tools in my shop are like this drill press for example is a classified ad find that I drug home knock the rust off it uh, relube the the bearings if it needed or replace them and put it into service in my shop one at a time throughout the place I think the only thing that I have that's new if I can show you I'll do it right here is this I bought this new which is the bandsaw and of course my my table saw which is once again cluttered with stuff so I guess what I'm trying to say is that although I've had this shop for a long time it really hasn't been set up for everyday use and you have seen that in the past from my past videos where I don't even have storage to keep some of the stuff that I have in the shop and I had to go out and acquire some so I so that I could get this place in order so to kind of reacquaint myself with tools, I went to the AWFS uh, Fair, which is a woodworking fair, and it was right here in Las Vegas. So I got to go down there and see some of the newest stuff in the industry, kind of take a look around and see some of the eye candy. A lot of the stuff is really high dollar, high production, CNC type stuff that doesn't interest me. I searched around and found some things that are of interest to the average woodworker and let me show some of those to you. Here is a cyclone dust collector that until recently has only been available to professional woodworkers on a much larger scale and at much larger expense. This one was around a grand, you know, give or take a couple hundred dollars and it was quite capable and quiet when they turned it on for me. They had an assortment of these products. These are turbo carvers. You know, wheels that can go on a grinder and you can carve out like scooped or curved chair seats and things like that. And I found that to be uh, interesting for the future and I got a flyer from them. I've got a nice lathe that I picked up used at an estate sale 
and I've got a few lathe chisels, but boy would it be nice to have these super deluxe ones. I also had an opportunity to meet famous woodworking YouTuber Matt Cremona who built the nicest bandsaw wood mill that you've ever seen. Check them out. This pneumatic wood carver was pretty interesting and it was very effortless to make carvings in wood with this thing. It was tempting, but very pricey also. This is not Harbor Freight. I'd love to have this Dremel tool router base. It's pretty pricey as well. Take a look at this demonstration of the saw stop safety table saw that makes it impossible for you to cut your finger off. That's a good thing. Check out this demo. I'll walk it around. Barely a nick. That was very impressive. I love my Delta Unisaw, but I wouldn't mind having one of these just for that safety feature. I've always been jealous of people who live back east and can go to flea markets and find old Stanley and Bailey hand planes on the cheap. In Las Vegas, we don't have a lot of those, and I was really drooling over these Veritas newer hand planes. And it got me thinking that maybe I should get one. So it was nice seeing those hand planes, but while I was in Minnesota on my vacation, I found in a secondhand store a plane, a hand plane. It says Stanley, there it is, number four. So this is a Stanley Bailey number four plane, and it is marked. Uh, number four on the front and if you could see behind here probably not very good lighting but it does say Bailey it's all completely intact there's minimal wear on the blade there's no cracks there is a small chip rat right here if you could see it but I'm just gonna clean this up put it back in service and that's gonna be my next video I'm gonna show you the process of flattening the sole uh, adjusting the the blade, sharpening it, uh, refinishing, or maybe not the wood because it's not in bad shape, and putting this into service because this is a quality plane and it can get me past my case of the wants for some of those fancier planes that I saw at the show. Well that's it for today's video and like I said I'm not the expert woodworker I just have all these tools from years of collecting them and now that I'm retired of course I have some time to play with them and figure out how to do a lot of wood shop stuff and build on the skills that I've learned throughout the years before this point. So join me as I go on this journey and fix up this shop and go around and kind of get all my tools in shape make sure that they're adjusted that the blades are sharp and that they're ready to go before tackling some projects. Uh, so the next uh, many videos are probably going to be shop videos of the tools and doing that process. Take care people.